hi, I'm Kristen. So today is one of my vlog kind of videos. So I'm just gonna give you a bunch of updates on what I've been up to, um, in terms of my quilting projects and things like that. So the first one is the weight loss quilt. Uh, I told you last time that I started tracking again uh, and started going on the treadmill again and I've kept it up. So I'm still tracking and I've worked my way up to an average of three or four times a week on the treadmill. I'd like to do more, but anyway, it's better than where I was a few weeks ago. Uh, and I've lost another two pounds. It's not a massive amount, but it's in the right direction. So uh, since last November, it's now a total of 25 pounds lost. So, um, you know, it's, it's a sizable amount. I'm happy with that, but I do still have a ways to go. So I'm not gonna end the quilt in June in the way I kind of maybe thought I would at the beginning. So I'm gonna, it was originally supposed to be like a square with like 14 rows, or sorry, 14 blocks across and 14 down. So I'm now gonna add at least another two or three rows at the bottom of that, maybe more. I'll, I'll see what makes sense with the math um, to make it more of like a rectangle quilt than a square. And then I, somebody did suggest to me that I could add rows on the back. So I think I might end up doing that because I think it's gonna take me longer than I expected to, <laughs> to get to the, the weight that I'm aiming for. So anyway, but um, it feels good to be back on track. What I'm not on track with is um, keeping up with the blocks. So I've got lots of blocks where I've got the notes for what they need to be, but I haven't put them together yet. So, but I've scheduled a time in the next week or so to catch up with that. So. Uh, and hopefully that will re-motivate me as well. So when I'm doing that, I'll be like, oh, I need to get on the treadmill. Cause that was the kind of the idea of doing the blocks weekly. So having let them slip is not ideal anyway. Um, but that's where I am with the weight loss quilt. The next thing, let me think. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you. So I'm gonna put a picture up. This is from Julie in Kansas City. So she's a subscriber and she sent this to my email and it's my X marks the scrap quilt. So if you've not seen that video, I'll put a link to it above, but it's a free pattern basically to use up your little scraps. You start with um, adding, uh, sewing them to like adding machine tape, and then there's a foundation paper piece block that helps you um, turn that into a quilt. So she made this, she made a quilt as you go. I think it looks amazing. <laughs> um, so I needed to show you. I just love seeing people, um, you know, making the thing that I designed is like, it's amazing. Um, and yeah, and I think, you know, she's obviously a better quilter than me. So <laughs> hers looks even better than mine. Um, so that's amazing too. So I'd love to see yours if you do um, any of the, the free patterns or anything else I put out. I'd love to see your examples. So uh, she did say it was okay for me to share that, by the way. So yeah. Um, next, I have some <laughs> kind of quilting mishaps, disappointments, things that have happened. So this isn't like in the actual quilting so I misspoke, it's not a quilting mishap, it's a quilt mishap, <laughs> that's what I've had. So two of the quilts that I made in my first year of quilting have basically got damaged in one way or another. So the first one was my, uh, so it's the pattern by Patchwork and Poodles. Um, it's a denim quilt, I think it's called the Inkling Quilt, that's what the pattern's called, but it's um, basically, I did it with old jeans and old shirts and it's a picnic blanket. So it gets used outside in the garden. So we did have it outside and I guess, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> have to like hold back my anger here. My, my husband didn't realize that the cover on the little day bed thing that we have in the garden, although it is useful for keeping the water off of the um, cushions and things, it does, it's not waterproof. And so instead of bringing the quilt inside, he just shoved it in under the cover and I didn't I was didn't realize where it was or anything and we had quite a few rainy days we didn't go outside and then the next time I went out and took the cover off I found the quilt underneath it was sopping wet and it was molding like little spots of mold I'll put up a picture so I've washed it on hot which I was kind of nervous about um, and I'll tell you about that in another second um, I don't think it shrank because I had I guess I made it with materials that had already been washed anyways, and I'd also already washed it before, but but it didn't get rid of all the spots, so I'm not sure. I'm still looking up things I can do to remove that, but I think it's quite difficult because obviously it's layers of fabric, and anyway, so I'm disappointed about that. The other one that happened was my learner's quilt. So that's the one that I did with various free patterns on the internet, like when I, it's like when I was learn, teaching myself learning how to quilt, 
and I just did a different block that I found in different places on the internet. And then I did various quilt as you go methods to put it together. And like, it wasn't the most amazing quilt, but it was special to me. And um, my son <laughs> had a wee accident on it. Um, a wee is what we call pee here in Scotland. Anyway, <laughs> so, uh, so it went in the wash, my husband threw it in the washing machine. Yes, very helpful. He's doing the laundry, but um, I think I'd washed it before, but if I had, I'd washed it on cold. So he put it on hot and it shrunk and it's way smaller than it was and it looks awful. Um, so I'm kind of heartbroken about that one. Uh, I don't know. I just have to not think about it for too long and fold it up and put it away. And maybe when I see it again, I won't, <laughs> I won't be as bothered, but anyway. Um, and it made me think about kind of, I do usually give instructions to people when I give them their quilts and I usually say, wash on cold like I've usually washed it before I gave it to them and I would normally say to them like so you can wash it on cold and then hang to dry so I'd love to hear what you guys do if you all pre-wash everything I'm not I know I'm not going to pre-wash fabric before I quilt that's just not realistic but like um for me <laughs> but if you guys I'd like to know what you guys do in terms of giving people instructions because I'm thinking what if they just um you know, chuck it in on high and then put it in the dryer and then they take it out and it's a quarter of the size or whatever, you know. Um, anyway, but that's just worrying about things that haven't happened because of these two quilt mishaps. Anyway, um, what else? Next, I'm currently working on a quilt that I'm going to have a video on soon. So it's, I'm using the isosceles triangle die from Aki Quilt. So when I did the my die collection video, I I said about a few of them, I haven't used this yet. So this is me um, using it. I didn't really have a plan. Um, so it's kind of an improv isosceles <laughs> um, uh, quilt maybe, um, but I'm liking it, but bits of it are a bit fiddlier than, than maybe uh, I would like. So I'll, but I'll talk about that in the video. Uh, so that's coming up soon. I'm still cracking on with my, uh, slowly, with my farmer's wife quilt and the low volume quilt. Um, especially after some of the other projects I've done lately, um, I've now got more low volume scraps. So I'm going to be cracking on with that, but I've got a two, a few other makes I wanted to show. They're not quilts, but a few other makes I just wanted to show you. Um, I don't have tutorials on them or anything. Uh, one was basically my, uh, father's, so my father has passed away. Some of you know, but his husband came to visit. So he's the kid's grandpa and he brought some pairs of trousers that my dad used to have so they're like silk trousers from thailand and are somewhat silk we, we were we weren't sure when we were looking at them whether they were definitely silk but anyway they're that kind of slippy stretchy kind of material anyway so he wanted me to make some cushions for his sofa with them but he didn't bring the cushion insert so we uh anyway we did our best uh, I did find the material really hard to work with, but um, but anyway, we came up with something and they fit his cushions. So he's got two cushions now made of trousers. And then um, for Easter, so a little while ago now, um, I quickly whipped up a couple of bunnies for my boys. Uh, I used some, um, not velvet, but they're like, you know, that faux velvet material. I don't even know if it's velour, but anyway, it's like that. It, you look at it and you touch it and you think of velvet, but it's not velvet. It's some sort of synthetic, but it's um, two old cushion covers. Basically, they were both sort of in the family of like a light green color. And so I cut those up, just sort of drew a bunny and um, used, you know, the heat and bond with some fabric samples for the tummy, kind of made it look like an Easter egg. And then for uh, the inside of the ears as well and just stuffed it with some old cushion stuffing that I had and things like that. So they like them. So my uh, youngest has named his Rabby, which I think is a great name for a rabbit. And my older one has named his Poopy. <laughs> he still likes it, but anyway. <laughs> so um, yeah, so those are the two just little makes uh, with some upcycle materials that I've done recently. So apart from the triangle quilt, um, I've got a few more scrap quilt blocks videos and things coming up in the next few weeks. And um, other than that, I don't know. We'll just see how it goes. I hope you like videos like this. If you do, then please subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and leave me a comment and let me know what you thought. Thanks so much for spending time with me.